I should begin by uh, thanking uh, many people in this room, but let me also just do all the protocol nonsense. So my friend and the Honorable uh, <laughs> Ambassador, uh, Ibrahim Rasul, whom I've known for many years, and I very seldom in my own country put the words Honorable and Ambassador in the same sentence. <laughs> in his case, it is well deserved. Uh, our Consul General, a wonderful uh, leader, George Monia Mangena, uh, of course, everybody knows Dan, Don, and, and James. Thank you so much. Uh, and I should thank Education Africa for this wonderful act of love, of encouragement, and of support for our efforts to transform education in South Africa. Now, I should say there are many South Africans, and I must add Zimbabweans, Mozambicans, Namibians, and many more, who serve as teachers in our schools and scholars in our universities, they have achieved much more than I could ever accomplish. And so I accept this generous and kind gift, the Lifetime Achievement Award, on behalf of those countless heroes who make our schools work against uh, those great odds of legacy and neglect. These are the citizens that constitutes South Africa's moral underground, people like Principal Faldila Cooper in Kayalicha, or the activists in civil society who shine a strong light on inequality like the NGO, Equal Education, and those in the donor community who provide the critical resources to create beauty from ashes, like Ndaban Sele of Pomodzi Holdings. The story of South Africa's past, present, and future are very powerfully captured in the lives of two young women whom I wish to introduce to you today. Both are freshmen, or first year students as we call them, at the University of the Free State. And I'm going to talk about each of them for a minute or two, because in different ways, you will see and hear in a minute, a South African story of hope and of healing through these two young lives. Now the beautiful young woman uh, on the left of the screen uh, is Zandile Quella. Most South Africans got to know Zandile through a television news program in January. The grade 12 results, or matric as we used to call it, uh, were released, and they went to this young woman in Umlazi, in Durban, in KwaZulu-Natal, and she had remarkably scored seven distinctions, that is all the marks were above 80%, in all the subjects, including physical science and mathematics. And so as the television camera came into the face of Zandila Quella, uh, she was laughing. But then it moved next door to her mother, and the mother was crying. And so the uh, interviewer said to the mother in, in Isizulu, uh, why are you crying? And she says, you know, because even though my daughter got seven A's, uh, there is no way we can afford in this shack where there is no electricity, with a lot of small children around, we cannot afford to send her to university. So when I heard the story, I went onto Facebook and uh, Twitter and contacted all these so-called friends and followers <laughs> and said, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, could, could you please let me know if you have a telephone number for Ms. Quella. Two days later, somebody from Peter Maritzburg sent me the number and I called the young woman. I said, Ms. Quella, you may not know me. My name is Jonathan Jansen from the University of the Free State. She says, oh, no, 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 no. I know all about you. I said, I hope it's good um, and that you're not listening to government. But uh, the, 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 uh, I, I said to her, what are you planning to do next year? And she said, uh, I have no idea, Professor, but uh, I said, why don't you go to the airport and we'll uh, pay for you to come to the University of the Free State and to study for free and you never have to pay a cent again in your life for accommodation or tuition or textbooks or a, uh, a stipend for, um, for simply uh, getting by. I've never before, I went to a home, walked down those steep, if you know KwaZulu-Natal, the topography is very challenging, walked down those very steep hills and went in to go and see her mother. And they did nothing. They sat there the whole day waiting for something to happen. But the mother then said to me, 
I'll never forget this. Do you understand that by your university giving a chance to Zandile, our future changes as well as a family? And so the story, ladies and gentlemen, is this. That given half a chance, the poorest and the most disadvantaged African child can and will succeed despite their circumstances. That has been my experience over and over again in working in South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Namibia. But there's a second lesson here, and that is that by securing, as the mother suggested, the education of one child, an entire domestic economy can be changed, and indeed, as I looked at all the little brothers and sisters, many more lives can be transformed. That's Andila Quella, and I'm very, very proud of my future chartered accountant. The beautiful young woman on the left, on, on your right of the screen, is Nozi Manga Bonnier. Nozi was raped at the age of nine by a cousin, and in a story very familiar to me from my growing up in the Cape Flats, you couldn't go and report the cousin to the uh, police because the cousin's father put bread on the table. And so Nozi was raped, and the next year, she moved from Dealsville, uh, near Kimberley, back to Bloemfontein to live uh, with her parents. One morning early, she heard her mother screaming. She was very attached to her mother. And when she got there, she saw her father in the process of beating her mother to death. Her mother died in front of the 10-year-old who had just been assaulted the year before, and she had nowhere to go in a terrible school. A young white man, and I mention color here because of the way in which both our countries still struggle with issues of the epidermis. A young wi a, a, a white man who is the principal of Gray College, a very famous public high school in Bloemfontein, where I now live, he discovered this young woman and put her in a winter school in the rather opulent surroundings of Gray High School. And in the winter school, she went from failing every subject to getting distinctions in every subject. So Johan Falstiet, the principal of Gray, called me up one day and he said to me, Jonathan, I would love you to meet Nozimanga. I said, Johan, I'm too busy, man. I'm traveling this whole week. He said, listen, even if we do it after hours. So seven o'clock that evening, he came with Nozi, dropped her in my office, and he left. And his idea was that maybe I could tell the story of Nozi in my weekly column in the Times. That's not the New York Times, that's the Sunday Times. <laughs> and I said, uh, Nozi, sit down, talk to me, tell me your story. And she told me these horrific stories and how she had gone from failing everything to passing everything. And this beautiful young woman sat there crying. Uh, I have in my office as a university president a box of tissues. This is mainly for my faculty, so when they come in <laughs> with sad stories, I uh, move the tissue box towards them. And as Nausey uh, cried, um, I pushed the tissue box towards her. Then I said, Nozi, I want you to imagine your mother was in the corner of this office here, right over there. Just imagine your mother's alive and she's there. What would you want to say to your mom? And this is what she said. Without thinking, I would tell my mother, I am now stronger than I have ever been. And with that, she pushed the tissue box towards me. The story of this human biology major is that the capacity to overcome great odds is the story of South Africa when everyone, including the natives, not too long ago, thought we would not survive as a country. And there's another story, a beautiful South African story, that it took one 
older white man to be moved by the life of this young black learner to realize that there was a partnership through which together we can and must rebuild a country. Now, in closing, I did write up the story for the Times. And within days, ordinary South Africans reading that story, and to this very day, deposited everything from 10 Rand to 2,000 to 30,000 rands into a bursary for Nausea. So much so that we've not only covered a full degree, we were able to cover other students as well. And the most powerful story was a grandmother, a black woman, calling me from Durban. And she said, Professor, after my pension deductions, deductions from my pension, I only have 20 rand left. Do you think that is enough if I gave you 20 rand for nausea money? I said, ma'am, if you gave me 20 cents, it is enough. And so I hope all of you, as you see not only the stories of these two wonderful young women, would also see the story of a country. And whether it is 20 rand or $20, I hope you contribute to Education Africa. Thank you very much. <laughs>